Okay, here we are. Welcome back, everybody. It is January 30th, one day away from the end of the month. And so I thought it would be appropriate maybe to talk a little bit about month end strategies, I, I uh, think is uh, a good reminder. But before we get into that, um, I did do a post today regarding Life in Balance Tools. That's the company that publishes or sells mm -hmm. the printed materials that uh, me and Ben came up with. And, uh, and that includes all of these items and so forth. Uh, honestly, um, they've asked me to give them um, redress this because Niken has now come up with a strategy for printed catalogs that they've cleared. So that's gonna happen. And any other items that we had for sale on Life and Balance tools, which include t-shirts, hats, uh, drapes for your tables, especially if you plan to do some live events, all of my tables were always dressed properly with the Niken logo and stuff. Um, so I sent some screen captures of some of the items that are on the website. Um, you don't have the web <laughs> access to the website. Um, but I just took those screen captures. If you're, if there's things there that you think, or you've purchased in the past that you'd like to be able to repurchase, I need to know, um, because I told them by tomorrow, I would give them the pared down list of items. What they did tell me was that in order for this to work economically, given the, the rising costs of materials, supplies, and their business model, which is print on demand, they have to increase the quantity of a purchase. So rather than buying bundles of five or 10, they may go up to 25 or 50 um, as a minimum purchase with the exception of the catalogs because those are uh, gonna be subsidized by Niken. So I just wanna know what should they carry as, a, as a, something that you're gonna want um, in order to, you know, put that up on the screens and people can order or reorder again. One of the items that uh, I've seen so far, everybody's reacting to, you, you want copies of, is the waterfall and uh, sport bottle flyer or card. Um, what you may or may not know is that uh, those can also be customized the previous version, just like a business card would have your name, contact information, or your QR, QR code, the, the most recent version that I had them do was it would have um, your contact information by way of a QR code on one side and written in the other side. So you turn the card around, it's your QR code, take a screen cap, put to, and then that, that brings them up to wherever you want them to go, the, your website, I presume. Um, they could also do that on those uh, water flyers, those water cards. Um, so if that's something that you really are anxious to have a hard copy of, uh, let me know. Like I said to them tomorrow, I would give them a heads up on which items to for sure, for sure offer. Um, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Um, let's see, the second item, what was it gonna be? Uh, oh, yes. Just a reminder, um, the, there is a website. I know you guys are all starting to learn about the Nikon Share app. Um, if there's some additional items that you're looking for to support, um, presentation materials that you want to share to people, if you recall the wellness, or excuse me, the royalalliance.com forward slash a hyphen better hyphen way was a website, is a website um, that has links, which are PDFs and so forth. They're not all up to date. They're there. Some of them are useful. Some of them are relevant. Some of them need to be updated. For instance, if you click on the uh the water link, the um, microsite for the water products, it'll still have last year's pricing. It hasn't been updated yet. I'll work on that. But um, if you're looking for a one-stop resource uh, over and above what's on the Niken Share app, and I definitely want you to become familiar with what's on the Niken Share app so that we can start directing um, the content 
uh, that we want available. So we have this resource that we have um, as business builders, but then there's the Nikens version of it who are not business builders, uh, but presumably are being influenced by business builders. So we might want to migrate some of that content over or get new versions of that in the Niken Share app, because I don't think sharing videos is sufficient. So, um, so we have that resource as a backup resource. Please familiarize yourself with some of the content there again, the royalalliance.com forward slash a hyphen better hyphen way. Okay, uh, so here we are. Um, I thought the, the stuff that we talked about, by the way, just a show of hands, um, you can do that by you know clicking on reaction and raising your hand, just like I just did. Um, please, by show of hands, how many of you have uh, re listened or re-listened to, since we talked last week, to um, the, uh, the uh, Silvers of Blast audio? I'm sure. Okay. okay. Not all of you. Um, and there's the challenge of leadership. Leading people to comply with what's in their own best interest. Um, so let me remind you that that audio and my instructions for listening to that audio is by design. Um, no one on this call, myself included, has a minute to waste on redundancy or just stuff that's not worth it. So if I recommend something, even if it's 30 years old or 20 years old in this case, trust me when I tell you, it's worth the time. Now, I talked about this in the call last week and, um, and I talked about the four minute mile, the idea of Bannister, or, yeah, Bannister doing the four minute mile when he cracked the code, he, he made it possible for everybody to realize that the belief system was what was trapping people, not the reality. The reality was we could break the four minute mile. He did it. And then others subsequently that year by multitudes did it. And it's never been a challenge uh, in terms of a physical limitation since. So we need our Roger Bannister moments in Niken in order to demonstrate social proof demonstration that the business works, not just the products, but the business. And so right now, you guys are being called to step up and, and help prove that the business model works with your own Roger Bannister moments, which means to actually uh, help somebody do a silver ship in a month. And once we start to see that happen, it'll start to become the norm. And so that's a focal point. And, and the Silvers of Blast audio is so relevant because it impacts on our belief system, the reminder that this was the norm. It was the norm for people to do 20,000 points in a month, not even six, but 20. And there's one story on that audio that's even more impactful or most impactful is a woman who started the month end, the last day of the month at 2000 points and finished the month at 20,500 points. So you might think, well, how is that possible? How do you do 18,500 volume in one day, starting the day with a, you know, 2000, you're so far from the goal. So what would that be in today's equivalent? I don't know. You wake up, you got 500 points and you got, you know, 5,500 to go. Uh, you know, most people would quit or give up on the idea of going silvery because that's just the norm. But here's a, an example, the banister moment of a person making it not the norm, but the exception to actually fulfill their, ob their objective, to go after their goal and complete the goal and get it done. And so you might think, well, where did that, how did they raise the dead? Like, where did that 8, 18,500 volume come from? And so I wanted to remind everyone of the month end strategy or the month end stretch as we used to refer to it as. What happens in the last 48 hours of the month or the last 72 hours of the month that seems to pull a rabbit out of a hat. Now, none of what I'm gonna say is, is possible 
if there hasn't been some seeds sown, if the work hasn't been done in the earlier part of the month, which is to sow some seeds and create some interest and generate some activity in terms of people going into the information process. And there are various stages of that process, but here we are coming in on a month end. Is there a way that we can accelerate someone's process, given that we want to close out the month and we want to meet our objectives? Now, most of you haven't been in the, the practice of breaking ranks as a rule, as an objective. It's, it's about setting volume goals, income goals, all good. But I found in the years that uh, I was personally most productive and my income was at its peak was when I was setting rank advancement goals. And the rank advancements generated the volume, the volume generated the checks, and that's when everything was stellar. So we went away from that. There was a, sh there was a, it's like a pendulum swing. It was like somebody put water on our, doused our flames and, you know, just, drowned us in really shitty thinking and and the thinking was oh but you're manufacturing silvers and blah 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 well there's always going to be people who take shortcuts no matter what the program is whether it's a six thousand point silver in one month six thousand point silver in three months whatever it doesn't matter there's always going to be workarounds but let's get strategic about these workarounds so that they actually are business building tools rather than things that circumvent the business. And so month end was always that time of the month where magic seemed to happen. The leadership in Niken would have their quote unquote war rooms, which was really their where they focused their attention on whoever it is that they were helping to break rank, whether it was a new diamond coming on board, a new platinum, a new gold, a new silver, or usually multiple silvers. So I wanted to just sort of take us back into what that experience kind of looked like um, when, you, when you set a goal like that. And obviously the bigger the goal, the more intense it is, but it's also the most fun. And, um, and I can tell you my experience is when, when you shoot for, let's say, I don't know, well, as Leo say, shoot for the moon, you might hit the, uh, no, shoot for the stars, you might hit the moon. I used to say, shoot for the treetops, you might hit, or shoot for the moon, you might hit the treetops. The point is, if you overshoot, if you, if you have a higher expectation, we know that there's going to be a fallback place. Most people set the low, in, low end of the spectrum, the low expectation, not the high expectation. And so they fall short. So the first thing that I would want to talk about as far as any kind of strategy is the breaking of the board. Now this is right out of my book and I'm, you know, in all the years that this thing's been published since I think 2005, you don't hear, you don't hear me pu push this book very often, do you? Talk about it very often. It's still, in my opinion, the best book ever written about Niken and network marketing it's right here because it is the record setting book. I did all the records that all, I broke every record Nikan had with this book, with what's in this book, the contents of what I learned. And this big book is really just video translation or an audio trans, excuse me, a written translation of videos that I did coming back from my tours when, when things would happen. And, and I was sort of reporting on what was happening. We're talking about breaking platinums in a, in a couple of months, things like that. Nobody's doing that. I did that. And, and so what the strategy was based, based on was principle. It was always based on principle because only principles will outlive us. Um, and the principles were simple. They were straightforward. One of these ones, some of you might remember in Maui, we were told to break a board. We were given boards that they use in karate to break a board. And we were given minimal instruction so we could... Uh, actually do it wrong <laughs> until we learn to do it right because we want we need to feel the consequence of doing it wrong so here's what we learned if you take a, a wooden board and we were told to write on the back side of the board what it is that we were trying to uh, uh, break through in terms of an objective a goal or something of that sort and so that board would be held up by our partner 
And on the count of three, that partner would raise the board right, right almost in front of our face, in front of our eyes. And that was done on purpose. We had our bullseye on the board on one side, our, our goals on the other. And the board would be put in front of us on three. And what would happen is people would attempt to break the board. They, they learned the basic motion. And if you did it wrong, you hit your hand hard on that board and it stung. It really hurt. And what was wrong was, well, when they put the board up in front of your face, if your eyes shifted focus to the board itself, in other words, your eyes saw the bullseye on the board and focused on the bullseye on the board, well, the natural consequence of that is eye-hand coordination. Your eyes and your hands would coordinate so that when you would launch into breaking the board, you would literally stop at the board. And that hurt. The board didn't break, but it certainly hurt your hand quite a bit. And so the exercise was to train our mind into thinking what's on the other side of the board, what's beyond the board. I know these are going to prompt conversations. I don't want to get into them. Um, but the idea is what's beyond the board. There's Madeline. She's holding up her board. You have to focus your attention, your eyes your mind's eye, not just your physical eye, but your mind's eye had to be focused beyond the board. So you would pick a spot in space and you would focus all your time, your attention on that. And regardless of whether they put the board in front of you, you didn't look at the board. Your mind and your eyes were trained and focused on the, the, the space and the point in front of the board. So when you went like that, you went through the board like it didn't even exist. You hardly even felt it. It just snapped. So the principle from that exercise is the principle we want to apply when it comes to goal achieving. Most people set the goal to achieve silver. And that's why it's a struggle. That's why they hit the board or they don't even hit the board. They come short. Never have I taught that strategy because it never was a strategy that was effective. The effective strategy was to always set your goal beyond the board. So what's beyond silver? Well, what's beyond silver is gold in our compensation plan. Now, what would I have to do to achieve gold? Because if I did that, then I would go through silver on my way to gold or I would help somebody go through silver on their way to gold, gold would, uh, silver would be almost like a non-thing. And so when you started thinking backwards from that, which is what this strategy taught, when you, when you think backwards from that, what would I need in order to achieve gold? Notice there's two generations on this strategy chart, not one. It's not about who I sponsor, it's about who I help my people sponsor. Because when I'm completing the second generation, when I'm going beyond the board, when I'm seeing beyond the board, beyond the first generation, I'm breaking silver. I'm breaking silvers. So it was always go beyond the obvious, go beyond the board. So the exercise of going gold was always and is today an exercise of building a team, not an exercise of generating volume two completely different focal points. If I'm focused on creating a team, what follows is the volume. When I'm focused on creating volume, what follows is customers. So if you're looking to build a team which creates volume and customers as well as other consultants, you gotta focus beyond the board. You gotta focus beyond the volume. You gotta see the people. You got to imagine not just your front line, but their front line. And it starts to choreograph and inform your, your actions, your efforts, the way you communicate, the way you help somebody get started, what you say when you're helping get someone get started. For instance, I was on a call with Michelle Qualchuk today. She's in Manitoba. And there's an issue with Manitoba because they have to have a direct seller's license when somebody gets enrolled. And so the question comes up, how does this powerhouse uh, launch window affect somebody who has to wait until they get their Manitoba direct seller's license, which is snail mail? 
it could take as much as a month, which means they lose a whole month of that power launch uh, window. And so we were scratching our head about that. And then it was like, okay, so what would the strategy be? Because right now it's like, go get a bunch of customers and then convert some of those customers to consultants. Well, you can't do that in Manitoba until you get your license and that could take a month. So what are you doing for a month? So maybe what we should be doing is building our team and, and, and sowing the seeds and then reaping the harvest when we get our license. It's a different strategy. And so the question then became, well, how should a person start? Should they first buy their waterfall as a customer and then upset, upgrade to consultant and get their pack? Well, if we didn't have this license problem, a person could do that right away. That would be a good protocol to follow just as a rule of thumb. But that can happen for a month in Manitoba. You can't sell them a, a waterfall as a consumer. They can sign up, they can buy products, but you cannot sell to an end consumer for the month. So the question then is, well, what do we want our people to duplicate? We want them to be able to get started immediately and take action immediately, which is sponsoring, not selling. So that is in reverse for the, for the sake of protocol. But the, que the right question is asked, what do we want our people to duplicate? That's the right question. And so that should always be the question when we're thinking in terms of the strategy, what's beyond the board? What do we want our people to duplicate? Because if we're thinking duplication, then we're already programming duplication. We're attracting duplication. We're communicating duplication. We're thinking strategically in terms of duplication. How would I start somebody? How would they start somebody? And now you're starting to visually mentally, emotionally position your focus beyond the board. The natural consequence of that is that you will help people break silver and it'll become quite effortless because you will find your challenge is not to help them go silver, it's to help them go gold in the time space that you've allocated in terms of the objective. And that was my secret sauce and what I taught in this book and why I was able to then set even loftier goals. Because once it became pretty straightforward, I could break silvers with my eyes closed, I started setting higher goals. And that's where the platinum in a month came from, which resulted, by the way, the first time I tried it, resulted in two golds and 20 silvers in the first month of business. Because I set the focus, the board, to go for platinum in a month. So I've experimented my own self with this, realizing that this is, this is the real game. The game is dealing with our intentions, dealing with our, with our, um, our, our limiting beliefs, challenging ourselves as leaders to go beyond those limitations, even if they were our own personal limitations. Every time we sponsor somebody new, we get to live vicariously through them. We get to challenge our belief through them because they don't believe anything until we tell them what to believe. And usually we get them to believe what we believe. And that's usually our shortcomings. So let's do the opposite. Let's, let's attempt to go beyond everything we've ever done, always beyond the board. And that strategy, I can tell you, will take you to the moon and back because it certainly took mankind to the moon and back. We didn't have the technology when we first set that goal. So, you know, they weren't thinking about putting people in orbit. So think about that. We, we, we need to start looking in that way. So now we're here at month end. So that was the first part of what I wanted to talk about, which is critical. I mean, it's just, it's like, that's the whole kit and caboodle. Um, so if you're helping somebody go platinum right now, think in diamond, start thinking about your strategic what do they need to do to go diamond in that time frame that you're having them go platinum? Because if they are on pace to go diamond, they will breeze through platinum. They won't hit the board and you know struggle quarter after quarter. You have a question, Nancy? No. Oh, okay. You want questions? You want me to take questions? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. A um, mistype. That's all right. Are there any questions about that? Just questions. 
not questions. Okay. Um, so let's talk about month end because how does a girl in this case does do 18,500 points starting the day off with 2000 points? Well, clearly something had to have happened that was pretty strategic. That's not an accident. And she was clearly focused on the objective, which was her goal to go silver. So one of the first things we have to understand is when somebody makes a commitment to go silver, do they really? Is it really a commitment? And whose job is it to ensure it's a commitment? Is it theirs, who's new to the business, or you, the leader, who's guiding them to success? Who is it that's got to be the backstop? <laughs> and yeah, it's you. Right yeah. You have to be the one who says, I see it. And until the very last minute of the very last day of the month, we have our foot on the gas. There will be other months and we'll set other goals, but we're not in those months and there's nothing we can do about those months until those months arrive. There's only what we can do right here, right now, because that's where we are. And so you've got to become extremely proficient at holding down the fort. Don't give up on the goal just because the volume doesn't appear to be there. What happens next is what determines where is that volume going to come from. It's whether you're committed to the objective, to the goal. And they, if they've done the sowing of the seeds, there's going to be people that you need to reach out to. They may not have completed the process. You may think, oh, they're not ready to make a decision. You know what? Maybe they are. Or maybe they just need a nudge. Or maybe they just need an ABC call to help them get to what they need in order to make that decision. And if there's a reason to do it and a reason to put maybe a little bit more of an incentive in play to make it happen right then and there, because you've made a commitment to the goal, now there's a reason to pick up the phone and make those calls. So what does that last 72 hours or 48 hours or 24 hours look like? The first thing that has to happen if as a leader, what I need to see is I need to see what their group looks like. I, I need to see where the balls are. Are they in the air? Where are they in the air? So draw, when I say draw your group, what I'm going to ask you to do is send me an image. And I just did this earlier tonight, but I'm just going to send it, share it with you here. You can, uh, maybe if I change the view to speaker view, it'll be more clear. And let me pin myself. There we go. All right. So what, what I drew here was what you see is here's the person going silver. And there's a bunch of balls in the air. These are all the balls in the air. Now, some of these balls have landed. They have a circle that's a, a, a solid line. Some of these balls have not landed. They're dotted. That means these are balls in the air, but they haven't landed. This ball could be a customer. This ball could be a prospect for the business. I don't know. All I'm asking that person to do is show me what you got. Draw me your group. Show me what you got. If you've got some consultants on board already, do they have an objective? What's their objective? Let's write that in. Where are they at? Where are they going? So we know what we're targeting. And then I can start filling in the blanks. Like, what's the volume of this person? How much do they need to get the job done to go senior, to go executive? What's this person left with to go silver? And we start doing the math. It's like, okay, this person here was talking, was potentially interested in the sleep system. Okay, let's write that down, sleep system. This person here was looking at a waterfall. Okay, let's write that down, waterfall. Uh, this person here is looking at executive. You know, they're looking at coming in the business and, and really kicking it off right. Okay, let's write down executive. And this person could be an executive or whatever. So what, what we've got is now a bit of a game plan. We, we're looking at potentialities. And what we want to do now is start landing these balls by putting a strategy in place. So what's that strategy going to consist of? First of all, we draw out the group. That's the first thing in our strategy. So we can at least look at it and start figuring out what has to happen and start playing tic-tac-toe. If this happens, maybe this person would do this. If this person does this, would this person consider doing that? If they do that, would this person in their upline do this? 
and you start playing tic-tac-toe because what I find is that everybody wants to win and everybody likes a prize and everybody likes an incentive. It's just, it's simple. So now you being the strategist, the, the mentor in this run to silver, start looking at this as a game. And the game is, okay, we know what we need. We know what we need to do. Where can we generate some of this volume from? What are the potentialities? Now, how do I grease? How do I grease the wheels of any one of those potentialities? Let's say we got somebody who's thinking possibly of a sleep system. That's what, they, what was discussed because you know they got some sleep issues. One of the first things that we got to use in our Nikan strategy, clearly, is let me just un, uh, unpin myself. There we go. First thing we got to do in our Nikan strategy is we got to commit to ABC calls. That's our strategy. Our strategy is going to be, you know what? They, you know, if Lynn's new to the business and she's a little bit shy about talking to her prospects, especially if they're people she's close to, and especially she doesn't know how far along the decision making there or how far, well, Lynn needs some help. And I'm not, I'm not shy about talking to Lynn's prospects. Remember, I get to live vicariously through Lynn and her prospects. They're not my prospects, they're her prospects. So I'm not shy about it. I could probably ask Nancy, who's one of Lynn's prospects, to Hey, Nancy, tell you what, Lynn is on a, a run right now. She set a goal. I'm helping her achieve that goal. I know you're thinking about this, but what you do today could really make a difference in helping Lynn, Lynn achieve her goal. So we want to do something for you. How's that for the start of a conversation? And now what is that? I know you were looking into the sleep system. Do you have any questions about it? Let's talk about what you, benefits you would get from this sleep system. Now we hone in on what it is that Nancy's really interested in. Now, if, if Lynn and I talked about this in advance, we might have agreed that Nancy would probably purchase the sleep system if there was maybe a bit of an incentive. So let's figure out what incentives then does Nikan have going right now that we can remind her of. Maybe the pack, free shipping, 10% uh, off. I mean, that's already two. And she might be hemming and hawing because, you know, maybe she already knew about that. But what could be that one thing that takes her over the edge? Maybe it's, tell you what, Lynn and I were talking and we know that the, the sleep system, uh, you know, without, without those, without the pillow or without the duvet that goes on the pillow, it's just not the same. You want the best, this is the best. Tell you what, why don't we throw in that if you make if you make up your mind to go ahead and purchase that tonight. So I and Lynn may have come up with something. Maybe it's a waterfall. Tell you what, that's a hell of an incentive for a sleep system. But think about that. You're setting a goal to achieve an objective. Help a new person go silver because you're setting in motion a business that's going to go into leadership. And that business is going to pay royalties and residual income for years. If, if they know what they're doing, right? And if you help them get it done. So here's another example of what could I do if there was a tic-tac-toe scenario. Maybe Lynn's purchase of the sleep system is about 1,500 points. Maybe we got a freebie for Lynn, which is about 250 points. Now, where's that money going to come from? Well, it's going to come from whoever is going to benefit from this movement. So maybe it's shared, maybe it's not. Maybe it's the investment Lynn is willing to make in her business this month, month end to get the job done. But here's how it might look. Maybe Lynn has Paul over here, and Paul is a potential uh, executive, or Paul is a potential senior. What can we do to help Paul make the decision to do to pull the trigger right away maybe we offer paul some points paul i know you're like 500 points away from executive i've got 200 points in my kitty i can get to you can you come up with the other 250 points or it could be paul you know you're close to uh whatever uh, getting um a senior done if i've got points 
in, by way of those 250 points, or maybe it's a waterfall, let's make it a waterfall so it's easier for me to calculate. And let's round it up to 500 points. I got 500 points and a waterfall because the waterfall is 500 points. So I might send the waterfall to Nancy in for her as her as our contribution to her purchase of a $2,000 sleep system. But I'll place the order under Paul to help Paul achieve executive for his thousand points. So Paul puts in a thousand points. I give him 500 points by placing that order for Nancy there. So that 500 point waterfall just garnered me a thousand points from Paul and 2000 points from Nancy. That's 3000 points of return of decisions made at the last minute for a 500 point investment. Is it worth it? That's a decision you have to make. But if you start thinking in those terms of tic-tac-toe, maybe it's just a mag step. Maybe that's all it takes to, to, to turn it over. But always keep in mind, you have points and product. And those are two things, not one thing. Points, you can leverage to help somebody advance in rank. Product, you can leverage to help somebody make a decision to purchase products. And now you you figure out, okay, how did this person do 18,500 points? They must have had some stuff going on that night. They must have drawn it out and they must have been on the phone the entire night making all this stuff happen. And then at the end of it, they even shot over their objective because that's just what happens. And so when you commit to your goal and you have a plan that you can leverage in the last hours of the month, and it only really works in the last hours of the month because why else would you go out of your way like that? It's to make it happen, to make the objective happen. You might say, well, am I forfeiting some profits for that? Are you? If you're in the business, you always measure success in terms of return on investment, always. So if I'm making an investment of 200 or 300 or $500, do you think I expect to get that money back one way or another? Mike DiMuccio has put on the table for Leo's group um, a, an incentive. I said, I'm going to give $500 to the first person in Leo's group who does silver in a month. And I'm going to give the sponsor $500. So go at it. You can use those 500 points, those, those, those thousand dollars any way you like as an incentive or just to put money in your pocket. I don't care. But that's an investment that I'm making. For what? Think about it. What we talked about earlier, the banister moment. That banister moment in his group is what's going to result in his diamond ship. I know that because I've been at this game a while. And I know all you need to do is get one person to get the job done, incentivize them if you have to, however you have to, get it done. And when that starts to happen, pop, 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 tic tac toe. So that's some information on how to manage your month end. So start looking at the potentials. Who's close to advancing in rank? Who could get the job done with the right motivation, the right incentive? What tic-tac-toe scenario do you have? Maybe this month, there's not a lot on the table. But keep in mind that if you're sowing the seeds and you set a new goal come February, then you have this tool in your arsenal come end of February. I'll give you one last story and then we'll answer questions. So one of my great success stories, I think it's in the book, is, uh, is, the, is the person who did um, 219,000 in eight points volume in three weeks. Um, they, they, they ordered their first product was August 22nd. It was about 2,000, 2,300 points in sleep system because they came to Toronto. I told them they saw the presentations and they wanted to do some homework. They wanted to do investigation, make sure that before they got serious about promoting this, that what they heard was true. So they got the sleep system if you had other items. And the story goes, his wife who had woken up every morning vomiting because of nausea and headaches um, three days, first two days, she was worse. And he calls me up and says, what the hell? And I said, 
She is doing what we, I told you she'd do. Tell her to drink more water. She's just pure. She's getting rid of some stuff. So he trusted me. Day number three, he says he wakes up and he feels the eyes staring at the back of his head. So he turns around. Sure enough, it's his wife leaning up on her pillow saying, I don't know what this is. But this is the first time in seven years I don't have a headache. And I don't feel nausea. And, they, and she slept with a bottle of uh, pills, asp aspirin, next to her bed. So he calls me up, tells me the good news. I'm like, awesome. That's just amazing. So he's now really excited. Now he wants to launch the business. And it's August 26th, something like that. So we're coming up at the end of August. And I said, okay, September is your month. That's your launch month. So um, here's what's going to happen. We'll organize this. We'll have your initial launch meeting. When can you have everybody gather? We figured, I think it was September 5th or something like that. It was just the first few days in September. He was going to pull a bunch of people into his living room. He said, how many should I have? I said, somewhere between 10 and 15. That was my bad. I didn't know any better. I now know better. I would have told him 18 if I knew better. But I said, somewhere between 10 and 15. And he said, and he had 13. Anyway, on the last day of August, we were discussing what was going to happen with these people, what we were going to present, and what we were going to duplicate. Now, because he was also in Manitoba and they required direct seller license, yada, yada, it was like, best you have some product on hand because God knows how long it's going to take you guys to get products, and that's going to slow the mechanism of duplication down dramatically. So you guys should carry some inventory. And, I, and he thought, well, then, you know, I, I, I figure 20K, I should get at least 20K, and that would make him a silver, right? And I said, how many people that you are going to enroll do you think can do that? He said, probably none of them. I said, then you're not going to do that. What do you think they could do? He said, they could probably do 5K. I said, then that's what you're going to do. Now, you got 2,300 already in the kitty. We need to top that up to 5K before the end of the month. Now, why wouldn't I put his new volume into the next month, into his opening month? Because that volume is his story, how he started. And there's going to be a last day of the month in September. And what do you want the people in the last day of the month in September to do? Put their volume in, in October? No. So do what you want. Duplicate it. So we put the, the rest of his 5,000 points on the last day of August. So he had a $5,000 investment in the last week of August to launch his business in September. On the last day of September, I can't tell you how many phone calls we had revolving around that story. Guess how much volume came in the kitty on the last day of September? 60,000 points just on that date because of that story, because we knew what we were going to duplicate. And we also knew his volume was going to be a drop in the bucket about what we were intending to do. We weren't intending to get him to silver. That wasn't the goal. It was platinum. Silver was like a nothing. That 5,000 points wasn't even going to count for much. So lesson. When you set your objective, set it high, set it past, you know, see past the, the board. Always set in motion what you want others to do in terms of duplication, because that's what will happen. So set in motion duplication. Have a strategy when you go about it. Have a month end strategy. You go, you go into this situation with that kind of horsepower, then it becomes fun. Because what you're going to start doing is challenging yourself to do these things and to get good at them. And there's not a lot that I talked about. It's just a few things. But my goodness, if those little things can create such massive results, what is 6,000 points? It's not much of anything, and you're sure not going to retire when somebody does 6,000 points. So let's get in the habit of making that happen with ease so that we put people in a good position, 
right off the shoot, get them to silver so that they can start making some real money. And they're not going to go away if they're making real money. So you have to be focused on that. That's your job. You're the upline. You're, you're the strategist. You work the strategy. You utilize that enthusiasm. Make sure they are doing the work, sowing the seeds, sowing the seeds, sowing the seeds, sowing the seeds. And then at the end of the month, you figure it all out with that strategy. And by the way, don't listen to me. Listen to the audio. Silver's a blast. Let them tell you what they did because it's in there. It's brilliant. Barbara. You've brought back a lot of memories, Mike. I remember my going silver. I was at 12,000 points, nine o'clock at night on the last day of the month. I had laryngitis. I couldn't talk. I called my upline. I had drawn out my group. I had the conversations for each person that had been talking about purchasing product. So I shared this with my upline, Carolyn, at the time. And Carolyn, I gave her the number. She dialed it up. And she'd, she explained that she was speaking on my behalf and say, hey, Barb, say hi so they know why I'm talking for you. And I would rasp out high and then she would explain what it was that we were doing and one minute to midnight the last order went in and it was a kinko firm back wrap that put us over the twenty thousand. but at nine o'clock at night we were at twelve thousand points and at the, midnight I, and we so were at, at 20. Three hours, 8,000 points. So but if you're ABC telling me collaborative, there you go. And I'm just saying 6,000 points in a month is a long time when you can do 6,000 points in a few hours. It's just perspective. And you guys, this, this whole training is all about mastering your perspective because that's what's going to inform you and dictate what you do and how you do it. Thanks, Barbara. That's great. Madeline. Yes, thank you. I shared, I think, two weeks ago, um, the strategy of getting to Japan with 74,098. Mine was the family strategy. So it's kind of similar to what you just said. So I had my sister, my sister-in-law, and then uh, my stepson. There's three family legs. So we got the my sister, myself, myself first in June, my sister in July to silver. And then in August... My sister-in-law got there when the four of us, we had to go to gold training then. So we went to Cincinnati. There were 250 people in Cincinnati and we were, we had a call in. Do you remember when we had a call in to find out yeah. on, I don't know, facts on demand or whatever to find out what our volume was. And it was the last day of the month. It was August 31st and I was short a um, hundred and some dollars. So my sponsor was there. And she said, well, you know, Madeline, since I offered you this opportunity, <laughs> she said, uh, um, I don't have the new IntelliRest pillow. It had just come out. So we called it in on that Neat Plus system and put that in and assumed that would cover it. And it did. So, so the stepson got to bronze, which then was 10,000. I think we got him to maybe 15,000, but never got him to silver. But with that bronze, our two silvers, and then Nancy finishing the silver in the last night when the four of us were in gold training with calling in, that put us over. Now, I had um, another first level executive, and she introduced another man who had six children. And he came to a couple of the in-homes and was looking at this family strategy. Well, he had six children. Lakeside Pools Incorporated. He had swimming pools or whatever. So he he put he when I was leaving, getting ready to leave for Japan. Once I won the trip, he said, "Madeline, in the month of October, if you'll if you'll let me borrow all of your demo packs." Back then, you had well, you didn't have to have, but the demo pack and the career pack. So I had between all the family five demo packs for rollouts and for loaners. So he picked up all my demo packs and took his six kids and off they went to work. And returning home 
from that Japan trip in 98 was October 31st. And when I came home on October 31st, I was gold in the fifth month with him duplicating what he watched me do with the family and doing by then, after goal training, I never had a rollout or did one until the goal training in August, but I had the demo packs and I loaned them out. So my sponsor loaned one to me and I just kept loaning them around because that's what we did at that time. Once I knew what to do with the rollouts, we added the rollout plus the demo packs. And and um, the first silver check was $4,300. And and during the, and then in the 15th month was platinum continuing to duplicate what we did at that time. And that was back during when you were teaching silver as a blast at those Team Diamond events. The first one that I went to was in Atlanta. Anyway, it, it is an example of what you were just saying. So now to get back to that mindset again and to to do it 25 years later, <laughs> another silver is a blast in my well, 25th year. Well, I mean, year. for new people, yeah. it's their new. It's new for them. Yeah. Yep. And that was 20,000 you, points. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Paul Gabios. Yes, uh, I have listened to Silver's a Blast many times this year when people were going silver. I'll listen to it again. Uh, my With the incentives that we have now, uh, it's a lot easier to do this kind of business, but uh, I don't want to do uh, like an 18K. I don't want three months to do 18. I want that done in a month. I want to do three 18Ks because I want to get this travel club done. Uh, and so I'm working on it now. I know there need to be a, six executives and so on, but the business is just moving too slow. The emphasis, the, the well, if you've got three people going for gold, yeah, that's it. Yeah. See the see the focus changes and, and start them with gold. That's the intention. Yeah, be, but they really should be going for royal diamond in their minds right away. If we set them up, okay, well, okay. that's well, the long that's the long term strategy. But yeah. what we need is a ninety day strategy, gold, or a thirty day strategy. Well, definitely gold in ninety days because if they're going for gold in ninety days, they have to ramp that volume up, right? Yes. Oh, excuse me. I, I said gold in 90 days. Platinum. Correction. Platinum. I'm talking platinum in 90 days. If you've got three people running for platinum in 90 days, right? Yes. Three people running for platinum in 90 days. Correct. So their uh, goal should be platinum in their 90 days. That means they will have grown their business to when that third month they're hitting 30K in volume. So presumably they may have hit 20K in maybe the second month. So you've got your 18Ks yes. with as part of their run. Your 18K is the board. Their platinum is beyond the board. Yes. Yes. So so we set them up for gold. For platinum. For, for, for platinum. But I mean, their first month, uh, at least when they're ready to go, if they're gold, that first month, at least it's 15,000. And then uh, they get two more golds uh, by the third month. So they're uh, 45,000 by that third right. month. Right. Yeah, so that yeah. working backwards, that would be a good plan. Now, remember, they don't know any better. Right. So best you make sure they don't know any better. <laughs> yes right yes <laughs> yeah that's how we start gold thanks mike this is this is really so important yeah yeah and, and, and like i said um it's all a function of what we believe everything if we think it's hard it's hard if we think it's easy it's easy it's it's what we b believe in our hearts and the the fault that we have is we've been around so long uh, <clears throat> we have very our beliefs have changed they're they've gone all over the place and right now we're at a, a level of belief based on the previous plan 
what right. have you observed based on the previous plan? And so it's like, wait, no, no, no. We need a banister moment here because that previous plan, I think, slowed everything down. With the consequence of that plan resulted in the results of that plan. So yeah. that plan created the slowdown. It created the drop in normal, what's normal in terms of someone's launch volumes. It, it was the consequence of the plan because if you give somebody three months, they take three months to do the minimum. And what do we know about when they set the example to do the minimum? They hit the wall. They, bear, they don't get it. They have to have gone beyond. They didn't apply the principle. So they don't apply the principle and then you give them too much time. And now it seems impossible to do anything. When you shorten the time and you apply the principle, what you now do set in motion is the opposite. Yeah. So that's what has to happen here. And it, it doesn't matter who is going to be the example. We need to put that example out there as quickly as possible. So I'm encouraging all of you to find the example, find that person who wants to run and make them uh, follow that principle because they don't know any better. They don't know what is normal. They don't know what is doable. You know, the, the first yeah. thing that, that happened when, when I started speaking with Luis last week about the powerhouse um, was he's thinking, wait, everybody's telling, you know, do three customers and then find a, find a consultant. It's like, and then the three, and then, and then and he says, it's, it's not like that. It's like, find a whole bunch of customers and then convert some of them into consultants. And then you got all your powerhouses and you, you, you know, you got your customers. Like, and I said, well, then what we need to do is we need to modify this program. We need to have the program built around your launch window. How many powerhouses can you do in your launch window? Not how many can you do in a month? Because then it's just how many can you do? You get 30 customers and then you get five uh, consultants or 10 consultants. That's 10 powerhouses. And they can all happen in the last month. <laughs> can you imagine that check? And that would be, by the way, the kind of strategy we're talking about right now. What does it take to grow this thing? It doesn't take minimums. You don't want to be thinking about minimums. Well, if it's always at least three cons uh, consultants to get a, a rank done, so let's have them all be thinking gold right away. So the, here's the what you see one. in my strategy. The first number you see is nine consultants. Yeah which leads to three who duplicate. It's yeah. not three consultants who lead to one who duplicates. It's nine who lead to three. The strategy is nine. So the objective is nine. When I told Marty 10 to 15, out of that 10 to 15, he, he invited 13. One said no, 12 said yes. 12 who put 5,000 points on the 7th of September, that 60,000 points was the first day of the month for him. That was a 60K. And out of those uh, uh, 12 people, four of them went silver. One of them went gold that opening three weeks. So one third rule, it was like, living color <laughs> so yeah. it's like their one third rule is the one third rule you can't get away from the one third rule so let's plan our strategy to incorporate the one third rule if i know i need three i need nine i need nine people to tell me what i want to hear to know i have three who are actually going to fulfill on that that's really good yeah and now I have a working strategy. Like if you want, it's one thing to play a game and not know how to win. But if you know how to win, then it's just a game and it's fun. And I know that I can't force anybody to do anything, but I do know in a certain time frame, a certain number of people will do what they say they're going to do. And that's not up to me. It's up to them who those third are. But I just know as a rule, 
that I can work with is the one third rule. And that's how you, what's the break through the board? You, you plan for the other side. So, so the, the nine that lead to three, for instance, the three are my partners. That's why there's a designation. They, they have triangles. They look like me. They're duplicates of me. They have a triangle and that represents something in this graph. So the others are just circles. So what, what that's a dis distinction is a third will start to do as you do. A third will go nowhere. A third will go really, really slow. They have to think about it, think about it, think of, they have to think about everything. And then a third will just start duplicating. So if I know going in that that's the, the way it works, I wouldn't have known that if I didn't experience it enough. But now that I know that that is sort of the, the unwritten rule, but it's actually written, I can work with it. I can count on it and I can plan for it. So then when I'm now strategically working with somebody, what do I tell them? I'm going to tell them a third of your people are going to do something. I'm just going to say, look, we need 12 people. We need 12 people or we need 18 people or we need nine people. Let's just focus on that. And then what will happen is what will happen. The three stars will show up and they won't mind that the other six are slow because they'll be too busy with the three that are fast. But when we're just looking for the three, So it's, it's all strategy, how to win, the, str the strategy to win. By the way, the first system I ever wrote was called Winning Strategies to Create Your Future. <laughs> Anyways, we're past the hour. Unfortunately, we went past the hour. But what would be a good title for this uh, training tonight? We got Draw Out Your Group, Winning Strategy, for last 48 hours of the month. Anybody? Goals. That, any idea? Month end strategy. Month end strategy. I yeah. usually call it the month end strategy or stretch. Strategize to win. I'm going to call it the and month Mike, end strategy. Maybe the, maybe the next one could be gold is a blast. <laughs> That's good. All right, everybody. Uh, well, listen, you got 48 hours, a little, a little bit less than 48 hours. Do not change your goal until the month is finished. Then set a new goal. Just make that the habit. So there you go. Have a good Can you month post end. this one tonight? Can you yeah, post, I'll this, post one this one tonight? Week? Will do. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Remember, remember kickoff call on Wednesday.